North America's leading airlines had a disastrous holiday season in 2022 with 13,000 flights canceled, and it all comes down to an IT failure. What exactly did this airline do wrong, and what can we learn about that? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And at the time I'm recording this video, we have recently just finished out the holiday season of 2022. It's a new year here in 2023. And in the United States, where I'm from and where Third Stage is based, we have a, a company called Southwest Airlines, which is a, a large, low-cost airfare or airline provider here in North America. Um, during the holiday season, they made the news in North America and other parts of the world for having over 13,000 flights that were canceled during the holiday season, leaving tens, if not hundreds of thousands of customers stranded or delayed in their holiday travels. And what's interesting about this situation is just the, the dire impact it had and the unmitigated disaster that this overall situation entailed. And as I mentioned at the top of the video, there were 13,000 flights canceled. The a company estimates that there's going to be a 3 to 5% hit to their earnings in the fourth quarter of 2022, which is very material. That's a big hit to uh, any company. And in addition to that, just to add insult to injury, the company is now facing scrutiny from the United States government, and they're sort of looking into what went wrong and, and making sure it doesn't happen again. And as I've dug into this situation and really tried to understand it, uh, there's a really interesting article in the Wall Street Journal Thursday of last week, right before the end of the year, and I'll, I'll include a link to that in the description below if you'd like to read the article. But it was published in the Wall Street Journal, a very good article that describes what happened and how it wasn't just weather problems that created these cancellations and these um, delays uh, that were pretty widespread and created a lot of havoc uh, throughout the United States and throughout North America. And the interesting thing about the article is it talks about how Southwest Airlines wasn't the only company that had to deal with bad weather. Every airline in, in the United States had to deal with it because we had particularly bad weather and, and some snowstorms that hit many parts of the world, including Denver here where I'm from. In fact, you can see behind me, there's another one happening right now here today. And the difference though, is that Southwest was more impacted than other airlines. Other airlines, yes, they had cancellations and they had delays and inevitable uh, reactions to, to the weather. But Southwest seemed to have a really big problem that sort of cascaded for days and days on end. In fact, I think they're still trying to recover and, and get used to business as usual. And there's really four key learnings I want to talk about here today, four things that I take away from this and four things that I would do if I were Southwest, Southwest Airlines and four things I would do if I were any organization trying to avoid this sort of problem or this sort of situation. The first thing that, that comes to mind is, is looking at the cost-benefit of replacing your legacy systems. What seems to have happened is Southwest seems to have a culture of low cost, which they are a low cost, low fare airline. So that is their business model is to minimize cost. So it's understandable that they're probably not going to invest heavily in anything. They're, they're probably gonna invest uh, where they need to, but they're really trying to find that, that right cost optimization to fit their low fare model. But in this case, what I think the company is going to find is that they're going to spend a lot more money fixing this problem and dealing with the fallout of having bad systems. That's going to cost them a lot more than if they simply would have upgraded their technology. And when you read that Wall Street Journal article, they talk a lot about a, a software they're using called SkySolver, which is a reservation software that helps them deal with all the schedule uh, changes or the schedules day to day. And what ended up happening is that the the winter storms were so severe and they created such problems and delays and rescheduling needs for the organization that the system couldn't handle that volume of transaction level. I believe the article says that they could handle up to 300 changes, but it couldn't handle more than that. And they needed more than 300 changes to be able to, to deal with all the, all the cancellations and reschedules they had to deal with. So they had this software called Sky Solver. Um, they had pretty inefficient operations as, as more is coming out. It looks as though they had a pretty freewheeling culture, uh, freewheeling business operations that were highly inefficient. And you add to that highly outdated, highly customized technology that couldn't scale for the growth that Southwest has experienced here in the, in the United States. That created a big challenge for them. So the cost of those legacy systems is a lot higher than what Southwest Airlines probably thinks. And so looking at that from a cost benefit perspective, 
uh, is one way to go about this. And that's something we recommend to our clients is, is understand what the real total cost is of your current legacy systems, what the opportunity costs are, what the risks are, and ultimately what is the cost benefit of if you, if, if you can mitigate those risks by upgrading the technology and, and having something better. The second lesson or the takeaway here is to really look at how you can scale your operations. So yes, this was partially a technology problem. The technology was limited. It was heavily customized, a lot of challenges with the system itself, but there were also operational issues that created this problem that Southwest Airlines had. Um, they, they had a current you know, limitations with their current processes and, and they didn't really seem to recognize that or didn't seem to quantify what those risks are, back to the previous point about technology. But what Southwest has, seems to have failed to have done is really defined what their future state operating model needs to be for the growth that they've achieved and the growth they continue to experience. Uh, just to give you a quick backstory, if you're not from the United States, Southwest Airlines is a relatively new airline and they've grown exponentially in over the last several years and they've become a very large player in the space. So I think what happened here is they grew so quickly that their operational model didn't scale to keep up with, with the needs of the company. And I think that's one less here. Now, the other thing that I, that I would add to this too, is that, um, you know, or really a third thing I would say here is that there's also cultural impact. So understanding what, how a culture needs to evolve to keep up with the growth of an organization. We talked about broken technologies, broken business processes and operations, but there's also part of the culture at Southwest Airlines that really, in my opinion, contributed to this problem. When you read that article in the Wall Street Journal, they talk a lot about the freewheeling culture that the company has, and that's something that they're known for. Southwest is known for being kind of a fun airline. They're different, they're not rigid and, and uh, kind of that old school airline mentality. So they take pride in that, and they were very entrepreneurial, high growth, as I mentioned, and that created a sort of freewheeling culture that led to a lot of inefficiencies. And their Southwest is the size of a company now where they need to be focusing more on adding to the recipe of their business. So in other words, not abandoning that freewheeling culture and that entrepreneurial spirit, but starting to inject more structure and efficiency and scale into the organization. And I think that's something that, that was a big miss, in my opinion, that the cultural shift and that cultural transition that Southwest should have made by now, and they probably will have to make that transition now, given the, the magnitude of the problems they just experienced. So really understanding the cultural piece of a transformation is something that's very important, or the, the cultural piece of not just a transformation, but the organization itself and where the organization is going is something that's extremely important. And then the fourth big takeaway I have from this is that I think a lot of pundits, industry analysts, and certainly software vendors in the industry will use this as an opportunity to say Southwest should just totally overhaul all their operations or, or all their technologies. Um, they need to replace it all, start from scratch, put in brand new technology, put in a big ERP system or whatever the case may be. And that's the refrain you hear oftentimes from software vendors, especially the big ERP vendors that have a lot of products to sell. They want you to buy as much as they can. And the reason I bring this up is because I don't think Southwest necessarily needs to do a massive overhaul of all their systems right now, because first of all, that's not realistic. They're not going to get that done anytime soon, and, and it could be overwhelming for any organization to try and replace everything all at once or, or to do that very quickly. But I think what they can learn from this is they, they can look at ways that they can make strategic investments in their technology. So in other words, they don't need to go through this massive digital transformation that's going to cost them hundreds of millions of dollars and impose a huge amount of additional risk to the organization when they've just experienced the risk they just did. But what they can do is say, let's really prioritize our technological needs and where the biggest pain points are and start to attack those now and get some quick wins and get some early wins. And then maybe, yeah, you get to the financial and operations or the, or the, uh, the finance and accounting or the inventory management or the procurement or asset management, all these different parts of their business. But it sounds like right now the reservation system is their biggest problem. And so if I were them, I would say, let's go after the sky solver replacement issue Let's figure out how we're going to replace that scheduling and, and reservation system. And then later, yeah, maybe we'll get to financials. Maybe we'll get to asset management and that sort of thing. But they don't necessarily need to bite off more than they can chew. They can be very strategic about investing in IT. And I think that's something that organizations could learn a lot from because so many organizations we see in the marketplace tend to bite off more than they can chew. And they, they buy a bunch of technology they don't need. It doesn't add business value. It doesn't fix any particular problem. But it's something they can say is modern technology and yes they've upgraded their technology 
So while Southwest, yes, they need some pretty significant IT overhauls and improvements, doesn't mean they necessarily need to throw the baby out with the bathwater or replace everything. So I think those are um, some things to keep in mind, and that's something that I would recommend to, to Southwest Airlines. So those are four of the takeaways I had. Again, check out the link below to the Wall Street Journal article. I'll also include some links to other materials below that I think will help you in your digital transformation journey and just understanding more about digital transformations and IT initiatives like the one that Southwest Airlines is probably going to be going through in the near future, I would imagine. So be sure to uh, check out some of those resources. Uh, I've included links below. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.